Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you why you still need a state manager even if you're using something like Tansta Query. No, I'm not talking about persisting the data you get from an API to a substance store. I'm talking about query variables, specifically for invalidating queries. So for example, here in my application, I have these two tabs. So I can switch between the two. That means that I'm persisting the query variables, where the variables denote in which tab I am. However, here I can mutate data. That means that I need to invalidate this query, where I'm getting all of the loans received as a borrower. So for example, if I come here and make a payment, so a partial payment, for example, and then I pass in 50 bucks, and then I make the payment, I need to modify the data from this particular debt. But when I come here and then remove this payment, as you can see, I refresh the data. And now this is no longer stale. And so it is showing the most recent data. That means that I need to pass in the query variables from the component where I am making the query. So this is the parent component. So the one that holds all of these cards. And then in each card, I need to get the same query variables so that I can say borrowers query dot invalidate. And then I pass in the same query variables. So let's see this in code. So here in the root page, so this one, the dashboard page, I have this query, that's query, and then I pass in the query variables, which in this case, I'm persisting with sustand. But if I come down here, I have this dead as lender card and dead as borrower card. So if I come to this one, as we can see, it is receiving the information I get from the API so that it can render the data. But if I come down here to the payments menu, so this one right here, where I can open this drop down menu and then scroll down further, I have the view payments model. So as we can see, this is quite nested. The root page renders the card, the card renders the drop down menu and the menu renders this modal, which is the one where I can remove a payment I have made. And if I keep scrolling down, I have another nested component. And if I come here, finally, I have the mutation with Tansta query. And if I come down here, as we can see, I call API utils dot invalidate. And then I pass in the query so it knows what exactly it needs to invalidate. And this is very useful because if you have pagination, for example, then it knows what page it needs to invalidate from the cached queries, React query handles internally. So notice how we have one child, then another one, so two, then three, and then four. If I want to access the query variables, I am passing to the query in the root page. I need to prop drill my way through. And if I had another component that is even more nested, well, imagine how messy it can become in no time. So for me to avoid prop drilling all the way through from the components that prefer mutations and I need to invalidate the base query or even other components that get access to the data from the query variables, so for example, here in the page, I have this tab information component, which renders this title and this description instead of me passing down the current tab. So whether the view is the lender or the borrower, I can just use my store and then I get access to the type. So if I come here and inspect element, as you can see here, I'm persisting the state using the persist middleware from Sustand to the session storage. So here I have the state, we have the query variables, so we skip status and type. So we have as lender, and well, if I change this, this is now going to be as borrower. So for us to invalidate the exact same query with these exact same query variables, you either have to prop drill your way through or make a more robust solution, which is using state. So let's take a look at the store. So if I come here to this hook, it is just a sustenance store, nothing more. 
Now I'm getting this TypeScript error. I have no idea why this happens. Sometimes it shows this error, sometimes it doesn't. But if I modify this in the slightest, as you can see, the error goes away. Anyway, I have the query, which is simply the skip, the status, and the type. So this is for pagination, the status for filtering, and the type for the two tabs you just saw. And then we have the set query, which we can pass in partial of the input, or we can pass in a callback function, which we get access to the previous state. So this is pretty much the same as set state with use state in React. And then I have the query, so I initialize the data, and then I have set query, and then I have the persisting configuration, so the name for the key in session storage, then the storage we pass in create JSON storage, and then we pass in session storage, and then we have on rehydrate storage. So this is a function that will be called before the state rehydration. So this is great if I want to validate the data against a SOT schema to ensure integrity, which in my opinion is required if you persist your data with an external storage. You should always validate the input data. And this is pretty much it. So all you need to do is create a store, a very basic store because it's just for query variables and you can call it a day, import it and use it anywhere. However, do not get me wrong. I'm not talking about every time you need a query variable, you should store it in Sustand. That's overkill. This should only be used when you have this level of nesting. In fact, if you take a look at this invalidation, or rather here modifying the cache data, as you can see, the query variable is just the idea of the dead. And I'm not storing this in Sustand. And why? Because, well, the component that needs to invalidate this query already receives the necessary information from the props because it needs this information to render data, which is not the case for this query. I'm not passing the query variables down the stream. That only applies for this case where I already have the necessary data. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe and like the video. I'll see you in the next one.